Okay, uh, and we'll do our check-in with It's Super Keen with Alex John Meyer's own Alex John Meyer. So uh, interesting view from inside the John Meyer home. Uh, Alex, Alex, are you in there? Huh? Oh, oh, oh we, we, we've got movement. We've got signs of life. What? Oh, hey, hey Alex. Hey. Um, what time is it? It's a bit after one thirty. Are you still in bed? Uh, yeah. I I was up late last night because that's what I do. I stay up till like three or four a.m. Like that's that's what I that's what I do. Okay. Are you like you're you're good though for the show? What? You remember the what? Sh- you remember the show, right? Like we talked about show. You named this- it. Wait, what? The that's today. Yeah, what yeah. Day? Like, it, what it, day is it? Is today Saturday? Yes. Did, did you miss like Friday? Did Do you remember Friday? Yeah, I know. I remember yesterday. Shit. Yeah, this is the in studio demonstration. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. No. It's that's. Yeah. Okay. I. Okay. Um. Well. What is gonna. I'm gonna need one hot second and some coffee. Okay. It'll be it'll be great. It'll be fine. Okay. I, okay. I, I, I believe. Okay. okay. Bye. Hello. Oh, what the shit! How are you this morning? I'm great. Welcome to my studio. Um. Point of order. Uh, first of all, as we discussed, it is uh, afternoon. Very literally, the afternoon. For you, I just woke up. It's an artist's life. I remember that was an impossibly short number of seconds ago. Um, but hi. We call it magic. Do you believe in magic? It's my only explanation for this. And I am afraid. But I'm also a professional. Uh, oh. So... What do you have on, on, on docket for us today? Well, I was going to give you a tour of my studio. And then Wonderful. You know, I uh, thought I would show you guys the painting that I got started on. Oh, yeah. Then that is, oh, that is exciting. That is the, uh, the main focus of why we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand we've got a little something special for the audience at home, a little treat. Would you care to explain that? We do. So uh, for every person that donates $50 to the Mtug Telethon, they will automatically be entered into a raffle to win this painting that I'm going to be working on. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to help out Mtug. And if you've ever been interested in or, you know, enjoyed my artwork, this is a way for you to do a double duty. Win an Alex John Meyer original painting and donate to Mtug and help us re- reach our goal this year of $30,000. Yeah, and I do want to just emphasize that it is the original. It is not a print or a reproduction. The original, made yep. with these hands. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, I'm excited. I'm sure the audience is excited. Uh, you, Reed, is very excited. So why don't we I'm get here. started? <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's get started. I thought I would give you guys a, a little tour of my studio. So for those of you who haven't been here, um, I live in Creve Core. I built the studio, not myself. I mean, you know, we had people build it, but I have three skylights and blue Kelvin lighting that helps me um, see the colors really well, even in the dark. Um, so this is my my print station. Uh, this, I sell my prints at Artisans in the Loop and uh, Stone Soup Galleries in Chesterfield. And then I also have an Etsy shop, which has been really good for me uh, business-wise since the COVID shutdown. And a Um, skateboard. This is my my mess. Uh, This is where I do all the things that help me send out those prints into the world. We don't need to look at that. Um, But uh, yeah, so uh, this is a a painting of my typewriter. Um, and that this, looks very familiar. Yes, it's uh, it's the painting that was on the mug that I was holding. I, uh, I after years of thought, and uh, I actually started selling, um, you know, mugs and bags with my paintings on them. So this painting is of a typewriter, and it represents how no matter what happens in our lives, the story continues 
And, um, you know, it's, it's about creativity and marching forward, no matter what life throws at us. So this was the original. And I, after I made this one, I made an even larger one for Wobble, which um, happens every February. And uh, I've been in Wobble now for seven years. Uh, and so I made a four foot version of this painting. But this was the tiny original one that I made. <laughs> um, so Small but mighty. Show. This painting I made for my solo show last year. Um, and it's called Manufacturer's Pathogen. And it's about the trans experience and how, um, despite the bodies we are given as trans humans, um, it may not match up with our outsides. And um, so, you know, we, we as a society place gender roles and, you know, ideals onto inanimate objects. And so even though these mannequins, you know, seem female you know we don't we don't know we should not assume their gender identity and um this is a watercolor it's three feet by three feet and i worked on it for quite a while and i just love the golden hues um so then we uh this is my desk i designed my desk i did not make it but i designed it it's 15 feet long <laughs> and that it has all kinds of a lot of real estate Yes, I usually is covered in paint. I cleaned up a little bit for you all, um, but lots of cubbies and spaces and uh, my toy collection. This is a, a painting I did of um, all of my paintings start as photographs that I take myself. Um, and this is a photo. This is a photo I took at my spouse's uh, father's farm when he was still with us. And uh, I love this because it's a textured, it's a very textured. Um, you can see that grittiness of the of, of the rust, um, and I it's a superior and the grass blades and I really love uh, my texture pieces are fun. So then, um, yeah, I have uh, I collect vintage toys, um, mostly toys from the eighties, uh, and <laughs> we've got Garfield here representing. I'm sorry, John Meyer. That's that's good. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I, I also collect Skeletor and Trolls and My Little Pony. Um, okay, so I'm not vain. I have metal letters that spell out my name. Um, this was a big deal for me. My parents gave this to me as a gift after years of uh, struggling with them to use my chosen name. Uh, they gave this to me as a way to show that they support me. And it really, it meant a lot to me. So um, yeah, I have it. I have it in here. This is my Skeletor family. Oh, well, you need the queen. like the, the... <laughs> And this is my trans baby. This came as a, tr as a girl baby doll. And I made all of his clothes. And now he's punk rock. And I love him. His name is Puck. Like my <laughs> drag persona. Um, and then, uh, yeah, all of my colored pencils and crayons and hats and... That brings us over to my reading nook, uh, all my books, and then we pan out to my sofa. I mean, now uh, really, this is where all the thinking and writing and coffee drinking and talking and chilling with friends happens. Um, I've had this couch for 20 years and now it's, you know, trying to survive in my art room and not be covered in paint. Um, this painting, I've had a lot of people ask to buy this painting over the last 10 years. And I've always said, no, it's probably my favorite painting I've ever done. And it represents um, the trans experience. Are we noticing a theme? Um, I, <laughs> Shock. I put uh, the masculine reds and browns and, and, you know, blues in this very feminine, round, voluptuous vessel. And then I, I put the more feminine colors, uh, you know, light pinks and lavenders and yellows and um, in this more straight uh, vessel. And, and so it's, uh, you know, it, it was a, it was a moment in my life and it means a lot to me. And then um, this large painting I did of, of a motorcycle and how for me the motorcycle represents freedom and is an integral part of the LGBT community and um you know it's I worked on this painting for two months so then we uh my door my sexy wooden sliding door thank you so much I, I do not it. judge <laughs> um this is a a drawing that I did uh, that, that I didn't do a friend of mine 
named Phil Jarvis did of me one night, um, looking dapper. He's, um, he's a good friend of mine and it means a lot to me, which, oh, I, I, I kind of forgot. I, I, let's, let's boop, 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 boop. I'm going to oh, rewind, 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 rewind. I do not remember anything I said. I will not be repeating it. (laughs) Um, So this is a painting of my feminine and masculine self sitting side by side on the sofa. It was painted by my dear friend, Henrik Postowitz. And um, it, you know, it means a lot to me to have this, that he, you know, I sat for him for nine weeks for three hours at a time. And he painted the original of this was five feet large. And while I don't wear dresses much these days, um, it's, you know, more like saying goodbye to my, you know, that part of myself and, and now, you know, Alex, this person, well, I do look a little angry. I look so serious in this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh you know my my duality of of being a trans non-binary person and it means i just i just love it so uh it also looks very anamorphs like if if your life had a book cover there you go. <laughs> so now we come over here this is where the magic happens this is the Ooh. serious side of the room this is this is where i make the art so um this is the commission i'm working on right now Um, I started this commission last October and then I stopped working on it because I was given the opportunity to make six paintings for the new SLU hospital. And this customer, he already owns two of my paintings. So this will be his third. And he was kind and patient enough to, um, to say, Hey, yeah, you, uh, work on those paintings for the hospital and get back to me when you're done. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm very thankful for my returning customers. And then this is my uh, drafting board where I do all of my watercolor work. And if I'm being quite honest, watercolor is my favorite. Um, I My favorite brands are Mission Gold of watercolors. Um, it's a European company, very saturated, which is you know what I'm all about. And then also Daniel Smith and Core. Um, and then most of my watercolor paintings, I understand I, all of that. It, it, just no explanation required. I am very on top of this. <laughs> and then I, uh, most of my watercolor paintings, I use black magic, um, which is an India ink. And I make dilutions of that, that like I create like, you know, darks and shadows and, and the fine line work to help me bring out like the depth of my painting. So, um, in the, that first step of putting down the India ink is, and then I add the color on top. Um, and so then, yeah, my drafting table, this is, this is what I'm going to be working on for you all. And my wall of paints. I'm a very visual person. <laughs> what? I'm an artist. What? Who would imagine? Um, I've made swatches of all of my paint colors so that whenever I'm painting, I can just look up on the wall and say, okay, I want this color of purple. I want this color of yellow. And I can just like, okay, I want this color. Here's the name. And I know exactly what I'm going to get. And, um, and also it's very colorful and, and, you know, makes my life easier. I love it. And the rainbow really adds a lot of um, flamboyance to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my big old monitor, uh, I, like I said, I paint for my own photographs. So this gives me the ability to, you know, put my photographs up on the monitor and really zoom in on the details. Then last but not least is the, is the corner where we started. Um, this is a painting that I did in 2013. And is it was chosen as the cover art for a book and a psychology um, conference about childhood uh, trauma from abuse. And so it, it, in Spain, um, I'm, I'm terribly honored that they chose my artwork. So it was on billboards and, you know, all over the conference. And it means a lot to me that that someone across the world wrote me to ask if they had permission to use my work. Um, So then there's this piece. This represents the swirling vortex of chaos that is my mind. Um, No, I had not gotten that impression from you at all. It's highly textured. Um, And so my hair becomes this nest that this mama bird is sitting with this look on her face like, you had better not mess with me. Yeah, that is one sassy looking bird. She's like, oh, don't even. 
Um, and I've given her 13 potential babies and only three of them have hatched and she's already feeling overwhelmed. And so this painting for me represents all of the things in my mind that I need to do or that are going to happen in the future or perhaps things that I wish I had done differently. Um, it's not for sale. And it, it was just this, uh, this piece I felt I needed to do. So then that brings us to the last painting. Um, this was a truck stop. And like I mentioned, all of my paintings start as photographs. So uh, this gentleman, he was drinking his coffee. And of course I asked his permission before I took the photo and he says, you want me to smile? And I said, no, 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 just, just pretend I'm not here. And he says, all right. But meanwhile, this guy was just me mugging me hard the whole time. Um, he said I could take his photo, but he was mean mugging me. And I just really loved this, this cafe. It was open for 50 years and just recently closed right before COVID hit. Um, and I just loved the aesthetic. And uh, so, yeah, bring us back around the horn to where we started. Hey, basketball goal marking the end of it. <laughs> All right. Outstanding. Well, thank you very much for that lovely tour. Um, and we're going to be moving to the workstation. Do you need a minute to set up there? Just get the camera transitioned? Yes, please. All right. That All would right. be great. All right. So, yeah, you can feel free to just uh, cut feed. We'll leave this running. You just fire it back up once you have everything set up so that the awkwardness is minimal. And we'll just uh, keep going from there. Sound good? All right. Thanks. All right. See you on the other side. Well, I think it's about time that uh, I show you what I've been working on. So, um, uh -huh. so uh, I've, uh, I've got the preliminary sketch down. I worked on that for about two hours last night. And this is really just the pencil to like give me an idea of like, you know, the scale and the proportions and where I'm going to be going in and starting working on the ink work because that's my uh -huh. first step. Okay, and I can see uh, from, I mean, granted, I am a lay person, but this is very reminiscent of Take On Me by AHA. Is that, a, is that an inspiration here? Because um, I'm, I'm really, I'm getting those vibes and some interesting choices that were made. Like, uh, I don't see the, the old-timey race car driver with the pipe wrench. Um, and I do feel that is a bold choice because it really brings mystery to all of this. Like, where is that old timey race car driver? Does he still have the pipe wrench? Is he behind uh, yeah. me? Uh, this is, I just got started. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, like I'm going to be coming in and adding, adding the color and adding right. some shadows and, and like a lot of detail work. So, uh, so That's color. Yeah. Yes, lots all of right. color. Okay, but, all the colors of the rainbow. Yeah, but that's black and white. It is right now. Okay. Um, I have something called paint. Right. That I'll be putting on the paper. This is watercolor, 300 pound arches, watercolor paper, hot pressed, because I like the texture. I'll be adding paint to make it colorful. All right, see, that sounds like wizardry, and I am slightly worried, but I will trust you on this. Yeah, uh, no, I promise. It, uh, you know, it'll be done, in, you know, it'll be, it'll be fine. All right, and uh, like, what, what tools are we working with here? Um, I, I, I see you have hands, uh, and your fingers are available, um, but that, those lines look a lot closer together than the width of your fingers, so I'm assuming there is something else involved here. Yes, I uh, I have my pencils. Um, where where is this? I don't know. I have pencils. Here we are. I have pencils, and and you sharpen them to a right. very fine degree. See, look how tiny. Look how tiny. Um, you sharpen them to uh, to a very fine point with usually an exacto knife or a pencil sharpener if you're feeling old school. Um, I use a hard pencil usually a two or a three H. Um, so I can I can get in there, and then I'm I'm nearly blind. So I also have these glasses. These are spe special glasses that I have made specifically for doing fine fine detail work whenever I'm working on my paintings. All right. So special vision and uh, the the colors. How are they applied? Yeah, I have superhuman sight now because of my glasses. Okay. Uh, how do you apply the colors? With a paintbrush. Okay. Um, I have so many paintbrushes. Um, 
all the paintbrushes of all the sizes, lots of sizes, uh, all over my studio. But for this one, I'll, I'll mostly be using very tiny paintbrushes. Um, this is the tiniest paintbrush that I own. If I try to look at it too hard, I go cross, I go cross eyed. It's um, 1 32nd of an inch big. Okay. It is a very tiny, tiny paintbrush, and it's my favorite paintbrush because it lets me get in there all those little tiny details that everyone seems to enjoy so much in my work and make me go slowly crazy. Right. We've all been there. Now, that does seem like a very detail oriented process, and uh, one that would, and again, I am a layperson that strikes me as something that would be uh, a bit time consuming. Yes, very time consuming. I, I usually paint for about four to six hours at a time. And then I need a, I need an eyeball break and I, I, and mentally, and I just need to like, <sighs> and then I'm, the next day I'm ready to come back to it and, you know, work some more. Okay. And I, I just bring that up because like with, with that level of precision and attention to detail and just real demand on your hands and your time, it is it's honestly staggering to think that you're going to have this thing fired out in the next like 20 odd hours. Uh, it's not a full 24, but you know, 20 ish. Say what now? Yeah. Oh, because you know, we're giving this away tomorrow morning. So we're going to have it all, all good, ready to go. Sorry. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know what's funny, but what? I'm sure it is. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh, okay. What? Well, I mean, that's what's what's in the contract. Like, it's very, it's very clearly stated, and I, I, one thing I do know is contracts. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you're saying uh -huh. you want this done by tomorrow morning? Yeah, you no. Know, thereabouts. What time is it right now? Oh, let's see. I woke you up somewhere around 1.30, so. I mean, it's an artist's life. What do you, what do you want? Yeah. So, uh, so you just want us to leave this camera on you the whole time you're doing that or? Uh, am I allowed to break for pee? Am I, am I allowed to go to the bathroom and, and Oh, eat? <laughs> of course. I, I'm not a monster. All right, no pains. I, but, but you're saying that, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be right here mm -hmm. or uh till I get this done. There is about. Oh yeah. It I I mean I wouldn't have asked anyone else. Like you would not be oh, here if I didn't awesome. think this was great. Um I I'm mean, honored. This is it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah. I can I can do this. Um I can do this. Of course. You, you, you seem, yeah, you seem flustered. Um, are you are you are you a little camera shy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh okay, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, out of deference to that, I think I think we could kill video for okay. this, no, and, no, and no. we just we just check yeah. back in later. Yes, yes. You just yes. show us what you got. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. So um, just before we cut away. So everyone, this is Alex John Meyer. Um, uh, let's call you artist in residence um, because that is your home. I live here now, right? Yes. I, mean, I live here, but I live here now. Yeah. This is going to be fine. And, and we have Alex's painting, which will absolutely 100% be done tomorrow morning and ready for pickup by the lucky winner. Yep. It'll be so done. It'll be great. Oh, oh, it'll be the best. Let's just check in with Alex and see how things are going. And oh, there he is. There he is. There's Alex back at, still at the table. Uh, Alex, how are we doing there? Good. I, I, I feel good. Uh, it's been about, what, five, six hours since uh, the last time we uh, we checked in. I saw you or talked with you. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I, 
what I what I've been working on. Um, so what, I started with just a pencil sketch. And the first step for me in all of my paintings is I take a Black Magic India ink. And um, whenever I'm doing a watercolor painting, I will take the Black Magic India ink and make dilutions. So like, you know, a, a little bit of water, a little bit more water, even more water. And that helps me to be able to create tonality. So like shadows and like depth within the piece. Um, so like, I got that done and was able to like, you know, really layer and, and get shadows down. And then now I've, uh, I've actually started working with the watercolor. So adding some color to the piece. Um, so my favorite kind of paints are, um, I really like core, which, uh, you know, is available everywhere, you know, art market look. Um, but then my other favorite brand is called um, Mission Gold, which is actually a UK brand of watercolors. And I really love them both because they're so saturated and bright and happy. I can really get a lot of color. So I thought I would show you guys how things are going so far. Um, voila. Oh, that's looking great. A lot more colorful than I remember it, certainly. Um, clearly <laughs> been uh, going at this. Yeah, so um, if it was okay with uh, you and I, you know, everybody else at home, I uh, thought I would talk about symbolism and um, this, you know, this painting and like why I chose it, why I wanted to do it for the telethon and what it means to me. So um, yeah, if that's cool with you. Well, I'm into it and uh, I'm also the one running the show and the audience can't <laughs> talk to me right now. So they're going to enjoy it as well. All right, well, cool. Let's get started then. All right, awesome. So uh, for those of you who don't, aren't very familiar with my work or my paintings and what I do in my process, um, all of my paintings start as a photograph that I took uh, in my adventures around the world. <laughs> so I, you know, when we're, when we're on vacation or when I'm just, you know, my day-to-day -day life, I, if I see something cool, I whip out my, my iPhone and just take a picture. Um, so one of my favorite things to do is, uh, you know, well, before COVID um, was my my cousin Alex and I, which yes, I have a cousin named Alex, <laughs> and I was was very upset with him when he was born, and they named this baby Alex, and I wanted that to be my name, but that's that's beside the point. Um, but now my cousin Alex and I are, are we're really good friends, and he's super supportive of my identity, and it means a lot to me to have family, you know, who supports you. Um, so we're both named Alex. So Alex and I, um, something we used to do fairly often, we'd get lunch, and then we would walk around some. Um, you know, antique mall, like local antique mall around town. And, and uh, a lot of my paintings are photographs that I took inside antique malls. Um, I don't touch anything. I don't move anything. I just, I just take a picture of the way things are, the way that, you know, the people at that work at the antique mall or the people who rent the booths, the way that they posed things. Um, and I feel like that lends some like, you know, authenticity, if you will, to the piece. Uh, so, so, this day I was with Alex and I came across, across this booth that was full of uh, Fisher Price, vintage Fisher Price toys from like the eighties, um, maybe the late seventies. And something about this, I was just like, oh, that's cool. A, a lot of my paintings are about like, you know, uh, childhood and nostalgia. And, um, and so this piece really spoke to me at the moment. Um, but and so, so, you know, I, I took the photo and I just put it in my folder and I just kind of forgot about it. And so then, you know, time goes by and, and me and, you know, Rachel and Sayer, and we're all talking about, okay, it's time for the telethon again. And, uh, you know, this year, Rachel, you know, you wanted me to, to do a, a live painting. And so I was like, okay, I want to paint something cool. I want to paint something that has meaning to me, something I'm excited about. And I started going through my, my folder. Of, uh, of photographs that I took from, you know, and uh, I came across this photo that I took that day with my cousin. Um, so this was back in like, I guess, 2016, maybe 2017. Um, and I really hadn't looked at this photo ever since. Um, so I look at this photo again, and it's, you know how you haven't looked at something in a while and the photo hasn't changed, but you've changed that's what this was like for me. I saw this photo through the lens of 
what 2020 has done to all of us and brought into our lives. And so uh, I thought I would talk about the symbolism and maybe it's obvious to me, but, and maybe I put too much meaning (laughs) into my paintings. Um, But I wanted to share with you guys what I see and what this painting means to me. So uh, are you much into symbolism, Rachel? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I'm like all good trans people and queers. I've got my, (laughs) I've got my degree in, uh, literature and and what have you so yeah, symbolism definitely something and I mean, paintings like this don't really mean much if they don't mean something to the person that created them so I would honestly be kind of shocked if it didn't have too much meaning for you or what have <laughs> you I mean you're not Thomas yeah. Kincaid here you're actually trying <laughs> to make something don't speak of him. We shall not. I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure some people love Thomas Kincaid, but I just it makes me want to vomit in my mouth just a little bit. But uh, okay. Well, so the in the first thing I'm going to talk about is in there's um, it's a toy clock, and so for me, obviously, a toy a clock represents time, and how now time has is marked as before COVID in the year of 2020, before COVID and after, this notion of, you know, after COVID, um, what our lives became once COVID was affected everything. Um, and this this sense of a loss of time um, that, you know, and how we use our time during this quarantine. Um, so, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's a happy, fun, toy clock but for me it represents what covid um has done to our sense of time and you know we don't get to spend time with our loved ones the the way that we used to um you know and how we use our time like i said and so then that leads me into uh, across the painting um which i know it's not very done yet it's what i'm working on right now um it's a toy workbench it's uh so there was there was like, it's a little toy workbench and there would be this little plastic hammer and these little um, wooden like nails and screws. So you would screw in the nails and you would hammer on the, on the little wooden nails and uh, you know, that they, so they would go in these pegs. Um, So it's, it's a toy workbench. And I had one of those uh, at my grandma's house that I used to play with. So for me, this workbench, especially in combination with the clock is, during this quarantine, um, you know, during this pandemic, our our mentality has had to shift about what it means to be um, to work and to find employment or keep employment. Um, and especially for me personally, I really had to think about and like reassess what working meant and to not necessarily tie my productivity as a person with myself, with my own personal self-worth, um, that, you know, we are, we as humans have worth regardless of how much we produce and how busy we are and how much we get done. Um, does that, does that make sense? It does. And, and I'm like, it, it's at a different angle, but I see, uh, I mean, given the nature of the show we're running, I mean, that workbench certainly, it it's fairly transcoded in terms of the work we do on ourselves. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. I, I can definitely say from my non-binary perspective, like the fact that it is a toy workbench and and kind of the, the play and the safe experimentation that goes into that. Like, you know, I, I did not emerge as my current self uh, mm-hmm. effortlessly or on the first try. So mm-hmm. there was... There was definitely a need for experimentation and being able to do that in a safe and nurturing environment, which, I mean, honestly, MTUG helped a lot there. Just the building on yourself and and practice and refinement and that nothing starts at the level of a masterwork. You always start as a child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, that's the idea of like, personal growth and then how that's tied to like, you know, productivity and change. And I really, yeah. Thank you. Rick. I, I really, I appreciate that. I like that a lot. You're welcome. Um, so 
next, I'm going to move on to what I feel is fairly uh, obvious. I think if you know, in the whole thing, is this wooden toy vehicle or car or truck that says "Emergency Squad" on the side of it. And the 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 main reason I wanted to do this painting um, is because that Emergency Squad vehicle is in the forefront. And and to me, like that's what's most important throughout this entire you know pandemic is our healthcare system and the doctors and nurses who who stepped up and took care of us and our loved ones and you know Dr. Fauci <laughs> and all of the leaders who you know through their like time and wisdom and and knowledge um, are are doing their best to help us through this um, you know so I, I consider this painting like like a thank you letter, like a love letter to all of our, you know, nurses and doctors. And I have an, uh, quite a number of friends who are, who are nurses and doctors who are, you know, putting their lives at risk um, to, to help people and, you know, affected by COVID. But then also like, you know, there are a lot of people in our, in our personal community who, uh, you know, aren't doctors or nurses, but definitely give their time and, and love and effort towards helping other people through this pandemic. Like MTUG, we have our pantry and, you know, all the M, our volunteers, you know, who every week they show up and they help the, fulfill those pantry orders. And, you know, we have volunteers who run our deliveries to, so that, you know, our, the members of, you know, MTUG, people who need food and who need assistance during this time, you know, can can get the help that they need to survive. Um, so that's, you know, part of what MTUG does. One of the reasons why we need, you know, this, this telephone means so much is so we can continue to provide that support to the people in our community who need it. Um, so last but not least, uh, <laughs> there's a, a blatant nod to uh, our LGBTQ plus community. I have this there's, you know, and I didn't put this in the painting. It's, it's just what was there the day I took the photograph is this stack of rings that are the colors of the rainbow, um, which obviously for me represents diversity and the beauty of our communities and how during this time we all, we will get through this together, uh, you know, through the strength and, and, you know, of our communities. And I know that we're all separated physically right now, but you know, we're, we still have one another. And I think, you know, our relationships have changed and, you know, but, and who, you know, who we spend our time with may have changed, but, but our communities I feel are what will help us get through this time. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the fact that it is a, a children's toy or in the case of those rings, it's, it's an infant's toy. That's, that's like and, a toddler. Yeah. yeah. And for kids that age, like their toys, as fun as they are, I mean, at least as far as my two and observing them were also a source of comfort like it was a thing that made them happy and feel safe and secure and in its own way like that's that's what our community is we we look out for each other we take care of each other yeah we give that comfort and safety and security and just that feeling of being okay yeah uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the whole painting for me, it's like, I didn't set out to even make a painting about 2020. <laughs> that's, that's not at all actually what I had planned. I was going to just do something happy and colorful and, and rainbow and LGBT. And then I found this, this photo I took that day all those years ago. And I was just like, oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. So uh, we are going to be, I'm going to be fin finishing this painting and uh, a little reminder for anyone who didn't see the intro um, one, this morning, um, we're going to be accepting donations, obviously, um, <laughs> throughout this telethon, but anyone who donates $50 or more is automatically entered to win, to, to win this painting. Um, so, you know, I'm going to bust my hump <laughs> and uh finish this and then tomorrow morning i think you said what what time did you say we were going to be drawing the winner's name oh we're we're targeting around 10 a.m what i mean 
we can go I have, a little. I get we, it. I, have, I I'm getting up. Okay, I will be awake. <laughs> okay, I we we do ten thirty. I mean eleven. We can, we can push that back a, a little. Oh, I, I bet. It'll be fine. I, I'll be It'll awake be too. We're all awake. <laughs> it's fine. Yes, but yeah, chance to win this this meaning rich and and impactful piece from professional artist. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, it'll be it'll be really good, and I'm excited. And once I've had some coffee tomorrow morning, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna read a, a children's book. Um, that that has yeah, I thought that maybe some of our younger viewers would enjoy. So I'm gonna read a little children's book, and then we're gonna draw the winner of this painting. So yeah, yeah, I, I that sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, letting us back into your studio. We'll check in with you down the line, and uh, everything's looking great. Can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you, Rachel. I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, we're just gonna check in. Uh, Alex is Alex. You there? Hey, hey, hey buddy. Hey. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. It's no, it's it's fine. I, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting there. I'm I'm doing my best. It's yeah. you know, it's it's fine. Yeah, you you look great. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so you feel feel good on on timeline here? You you feeling confident? It's awesome. Um, you making sure to stand up and stretch time to time, right? You know, staying hydrated, all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was taking some eyeball breaks, and then I was like, oh, who needs to see? It's fine. Um, yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Okay. Uh, all right. Um. Okay, we're gonna. Oh God! <laughs> that was paint water. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go. All right. Yeah, we're we're going back out and stop being a party to this. Um, bye. Bye. Uh, bye. Alex. Alex. Oh, not you too, Alex. Oh, thank God. Oh, I thought you had ditched us for the drag show, too. Yeah. Here. That's great. So I just, wait, no, no, don't you dare. Do not, don't you dare, Alex, no, don't you 